you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own. We know that we have four wires that are each carrying current of equal magnitudes, and we know that in that situation, we have a magnetic field produced by each of the wires. And that magnetic field, B, is equal to the following equation. What's important first to understand is the value of R, which is going to be the distance from the wire to point P. Now we can see that all four wires are the same distance away from point P. We just have to find that distance. Now if we superimpose a right triangle onto the figure, we can see that two sides of the right triangle are the same. And in that situation, and it only works if it's a right triangle, we know that the hypotenuse will be that side length of point two multiplied by the square root of two. That will always work as long as the two sides of the right triangle are the same. We could then take the side length and put a radical two on it. Now we don't want the full length of the hypotenuse, we only want the distance from the wire to point P. So that turns out to be just half of the hypotenuse. So if we cut this value in half, rather than having point two radical two, we'll have point one radical two. So it turns out that R will have that value of point one radical two. Now we were given the current that's flowing through each wire and then mu is a constant equal to four pi times 10 to the minus seven. So we can actually plug right into the formula and get the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by each wire. And when you plug that in, you should get approximately 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus six and the unit of magnetic field is Tesla. Because it's multiplied by 10 to the minus six, we can actually call this micro Tesla. So we're basically just changing the times 10 to the minus 6 to micro. So this would be the final magnitude of the magnetic field. Now remember, each of the four wires is producing a magnetic field of this magnitude. So now we have to figure out how we're going to add up those four different magnetic fields. Now we say they're different because each one's going to turn out to have a different direction. And that direction is determined by the so-called right-hand rule. So we'll go through these one by one. We'll start with wire A. And hopefully from the picture we can see that the right hand is grasping wire A. The thumb, which is right back here, is pointing in the direction of the current, which the X shows is into the page. So we would have to show our thumb pointing into the page as it is in the picture. And then our fingers would curl around and show the direction of the magnetic field. Now it's going to be a circular magnetic field, so it might look something like this. Now remember, the fingers are curling in a sort of clockwise fashion, so that means that when we draw our magnetic field along the circle, it has to be pointing in a clockwise fashion. Now notice right at point P, it's going to be pointing in that direction right there. That is following the clockwise direction of this circular magnetic field. So we know there's a magnetic field produced by wire A that's pointing in this direction, and we can label that BA. Now if we go over to wire C, we can see that the current is pointing out of the page, as indicated by the dot, so that's why the thumb is projecting out of the page. And if you grasp the wire with your thumb pointing out of the page, you can see your fingers are now pointing in a counterclockwise fashion. So that means that the magnetic field is going in that counterclockwise fashion. Once it gets to point P, it would be pointing exactly in this direction here. It's almost pointing exactly at wire D, in fact. So that would be a magnetic field produced by wire C, and we would label that BC. Now on to wire D, the thumb is pointing out of the page because that's the direction of the current. The fingers now go in a counterclockwise direction, so that means at point P, without drawing the circle, the magnetic field produced by wire D is going to be pointing in this direction, actually in the same exact direction as BA. So we're going to have to carefully label this one BD. Finally, on to wire B, the thumb is pointing into the page because of this X. The fingers are wrapped in a clockwise fashion. So if we were to draw that circle, it would go in a clockwise fashion. At point P, the magnetic field would be pointing in the same exact direction. Maybe we'll have to squeeze it in here. In the same exact direction as BC was. So here we have a magnetic field that we can label B, B. And that represents the magnetic field produced by wire B. So hopefully the directions of all four magnetic fields were clear by using the right-hand rule. What we've now done is superimposed a Y and an X axis onto point P. 
and hopefully we can see from our drawing that this angle right here would be a 45 degree angle and that would be true on the left side over here and also on the right side. Now the next part is very important. Notice for BA that it can be broken into an X component that points to the left as well as a Y component that points down. Notice the same thing would be true for BD because it's pointing in the exact same direction. So there would be an X component and a Y component. Now on to BC, there's an X component, but this time that X component points to the right. The Y component still points downward. For BB, again, an X component that points to the right and a Y component that points downward. So what we notice is that the X components of the four magnetic fields will cancel each other out. So what that means is that there is no magnetic field in the X direction, so we don't have to worry about it. But notice that the Y components do not cancel out. The Y component of BA was pointing downward, the Y component of BB also downward, BC was downward, and BD was also downward. So we have four Y components that all point downward. Now, because that Y component was opposite of the 45 degree angle, it would involve the sine of the angle. So that means that the Y component of each magnetic field would be the magnetic field multiplied by the sine of that 45 degree angle. And that's going to be true for BA and for BB and all four of them. So in essence, what we need to do is take our four magnetic fields whose values were 7.07 .07 microtesla, and multiply them by the sine of 45. And that's going to give us the overall magnetic field at point P. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 20 microtesla, and then the direction would be towards the bottom of the page. And that is indeed the correct answer to the question. So just keep in mind once again that the X components, we had two of them pointing to the left and two of them pointing to the right, those all cancel each other out. It was the four Y components that all pointed downward, and so we had to include all four of them in our calculation, and that's why we multiplied our magnetic field strength by four, and then the sine of 45 for that Y component. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.